Alright, so this is part one of what if female Deku was Destroya. Now, I will only upload, be only uploading this video if, hold on, sorry about that. Anyway, as I was saying, I'll only upload this after um, Space Godzilla and I'll ask you if you guys would quite like to see it. So anyway. Let's get into it. So, her basic powers will be a micro micro oxygen beam. No, it it's an oxygen destroyer beam. The uh, laser horn. Her uh, her energy absorption. And her ability to divide and combine. So let's get into the what if. So. Izumi will be born to Hizashi and In and Inko Midoriya as she's as while she's growing up, Hizashi and Inko no see that do, do begin to notice something. For one Izumi has a large fascination with a chemical known as micro-oxygen. Hold on, give me a minute. Sorry about that. And that she had a habit of producing these purple fumes from her body, as you can see in the picture. Now, Hizashi and Inko get worried as they would take even me to the quirk doctor. As the quirk doctor said that her basically did a bunch of assessments and found that her quirks that her quirk was na her quirk and they was called Destroya. Yes, I'm that lazy, I'm gonna name it Destroya. As, hold on, sorry about that, as Izumi isn't in the room with them, as the quirk doctor basically explains that her quirk basically allows her to shoot a beam of micro-oxygen that is powerful enough to kill a person if hit full, if hit full force. And she can... She can also absorb energy from people, along with her ability to divide and recombine, makes her a ve very difficult opponent to fight along, with, fight, along with her enhanced strength and enhanced durability. She's basically near impossible to defeat. As the Doctor would also talk about her psych the psychological part of her quirk, which basically gives her a urge, sudden urge to destroy any form of life that that could pose a threat to threat to her or would want to kill her. So, the doctor suggests that it'd be it'd be wise to keep her away from people with very powerful quirks, because this might cause her to cause her to attack that person and possibly absorb their energy, killing them. As Hizashi and Inko would understand as they would walk out along with Izumi. Now at the same time, Bakugo was getting his quirk diagnosed and Mitsuki and Inko are still good friends in this timeline with uh, Inko seeing Mitsuki. As Inko says to Hizashi, can you take her back to the car? I need to talk with Mitsuki for a bit. With, In with Hizashi saying, sure, uh, take all the time you need. As they would head back to the car. Now she does have, she does have the stomach beam that Destroya, Destroya was supposed to have in the movies. So if she does, because I'm basing it off the, com the manga. As her, she does have wings, but they're too, still a bit too small in order for her to fly. 
as Inko would walk over to Mitsuki, as Mitsuki would say, Ah, Inko, how have you been? Hold on. Sorry about that. As Inko would say that she's alright and that she needs to talk to Mitsuki about something. And then Mitsuki would say, Sure. As she'd look over to Katsuki, as she'd say that she's going to talk to Inko for a little bit. It's Katsuki saying, okay, how, okay, mom, as, she, as Mitsuki and Inko would leave the room, as Mitsuki would say, there's something troubling you, isn't it? As then Inko would say, you can see right through me, can't you, Mitsuki? As Inko would then explain about Izumi's quirk and how that she's going to have to remove you. Izumi- She's gonna have to, she's gonna have to homeschool Izumi, and she's gonna have to keep away from Bakugo for prolonged periods of time until she be due to her quirk's nature. With Mitsuki saying that she understands and that she she will break the news to Katsuki about it. As Bakugo had to just finished to getting his cork evaluated, as Mitsuki, as Inko would head to the car, to her car, as Mitsuki would walk in, and basically explain to Bakugo that he won't be seeing Izumi anymore due to her cork and how it operates. As Bakugo would be saddened by this because. Izumi's quirk sounds pretty cool, but due to him being a child, he doesn't really understand the psychological effects of it and why she would want to do anything, so he thinks that she's that her quirk is quite villainous and that she and that she will become a villain in the future. Because, you know, Bakugo. As Izumi would, would basically be homeschooled for the next couple ye- for a couple years of her life. Like I'll say she'll be homeschooled for about I'd say she'll be well UA is a college, so she'll be eighteen by the time she starts UA. So she will be so she will be about I'll say she'll she'll be fifteen when she finishes homeschool. As something very sad happens after she turns 15. So on her 15th birthday, Inko, Inko is just, no, not on her 15th birthday, a couple days after she turned 15, Inko is, is at home and Hazashi is working overseas, like in the anime. As Inko is teaching Izumi, about, about basically society and helping her with the with her urge to destroy all living things. Due to Inko's telekinesis quirk being relatively weak, she is all she is all right being next to and in front of Izumi, along with Hizashi, Hizashi due to his fire breath quirk being quite weak as well. I believe. <laughs> Sorry about that. As outside there is a villain, I'll say it's muscular, who is being chased down by a bunch of pro heroes, including the Water Horse heroes. Now, in this timeline, I'm going to say that the Water Horse heroes will not be killed by muscular, not on this timeline at least. So Kota will still have his parents. But here comes the sad bit. Muscular, looking for a place to hide, would break into Izumi and Inko's house and hold them both hostage. Now, at this moment, Izumi looks like this. As she does in the picture, along with the tail. As her wings have basically gone to the point where she can fly. As Muscular is holding... Inko and Izumi hostage. Muscular 
thinks that'd be quite fun, as he would, um, as he would sadly end up killing Inko. As Izumi would see the person who raised her fall to the ground, lifeless, she would feel a lot, she would feel rage, nothing but rage. As she would basically use her tail to stab the back of the neck of Muscular as she would begin to absorb his energy. With Muscular, Muscular grabbing the back of his neck as he does release his grip on Izumi as she would retract her tail, Izumi would move her tail back to her. With her then using a full blast oxygen destroyer beam as it would hit Muscular dead in the chest, but he had his uh, muscle fibers active, so all, it just dissolved the muscle fibers on his chest and left a massive scar that was there. As Muscular was blown through the wall, as he would then get up and run, escaping with Izumi, basically collapsing collapsing to her knees as she would hold Inko. She would basically pick up Inko's body and hold it, just like cradling it as she would begin to weep. She would begin to cry at the fact that she had lost one one of the few people who had helped her un control her urges. And now she is out for blood. As she would realize that she can't stay here, as she would, she would write a note down. She would take out a piece of a pencil and a piece of paper, as she would write down a note, basically saying that, basically sort of like um, what she. So I wrote down a note and then left down Inka's body as she would leave, flying out the hole in the wall as she'd fly off in the same direction as Muscular. As the heroes would get into the house and find Inko dead, Izumi nowhere to be found, and Muscular nowhere to be found, as they would see a note that would read that that would basically read that you heroes had had costed her mother's life, so now she's going to take things into her own hands. Uh, they would sign under her name as Destroya. And that is where I'm going to end this part off. I do hope you guys will enjoy this if I upload this, and I will see you all next time with possibly part two if you guys like this.